Good posture, Kara. Good posture. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Better Connecticut, where we sit up straight. We sit up straight and we talk with good posture, because if not, we're going to get in trouble a little bit later on in the show. All right. So that's Hi, good. Hi, everyone. I'm Kara Sundlin. Scott Haney You are here. Scott Haney, celebrating a special day. 20 so. years at Channel 3. Can you believe it? And You're not too amazing. far behind me. And it's about to snow tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Bring it on. We had some snow flurries in uh, parts of northern Connecticut this morning. It was very picturesque. Uh, some uh, snow showers that moved in. And then tomorrow we're expecting a bigger storm to move in. So, of course, Bruce and Mark will have more information on that coming up at 3.30. But tomorrow afternoon, you know, just in time for the evening rush yeah. hour, it's looking a little messy. And it all depends on the timing of the model, so you just have to wait and see. But uh, it'll be a little snow, and then it'll transition over to rain for Friday. But, uh, you know, there could be yeah. accumulating snow in here in parts of the state. You know who else is celebrating something big today? Who? Prince Charles oh. turned 70 years old. Take a look here. Look at this beautiful, like, montage of photos at the Royal... Released uh, by the Royal Palace. And they put Diana in, which is really nice. Which I thought was really beautiful. That was a, that was a nice Prince tribute. Prince Charles. Prince Charles? What is happening? You are talking about <laughs> Prince Charles? It is Scott Haney's 20th anniversary on Channel 3. What and is you happening? Think that we are going to talk about Prince Charles. Yes, I like Prince Charles. Do you really think this is what's happening three today? Three score and ten years ago, it was Prince Charles' birthday. Yeah, well, now you're you're one score. <laughs> <laughs> so we've so we've had some uh, little surprises already this morning. Yes, it is a big day. Scott Haney's twentieth anniversary oh, on Channel Three. It is. Mm -hmm. And a few weeks ago, we got together, and we spent some time looking back. We did. And since then, we've gone through the archives, <laughs> and we found some of the special moments from your career. Oh. And so we begin this interrupted version of Better Connecticut. <laughs> it's really with a look back at twenty years of Scott Haney. I'm excited. Let's look. Uh, it is just gorgeous out there. We call him America's favorite weatherman. Oh no, I think, I think my goose is cooked. It's probably an exaggeration, but it's close. And today he marks 20 years on Channel 3. Even he can't believe it. It does, it feels like it's gone like that. Scott William Haney grew up with his parents and two older brothers in a modest house in Comac, Long Island, where his mother still lives. This is the spot she used to be. Who can turn the world on with her smile? He credits the Mary Tyler Moore Show with giving him the idea that TV could be a career. They had the best time. Lou was the most amazing boss. Mary was terrific. Ted Knight was fantastic. And I'm thinking, one day I'm going to work in a newsroom. He thought that job would be news anchor until he went to Syracuse University and took a TV production class. Every day you switch a different, you, you're a different role in the, in the newsroom. And that's when I started doing the weather. And my professors were like, forget the news. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, you should do the weather. I'm like, I don't know anything about the weather. Scott? Ron, you don't have to get behind the wheel of a car today to be driven crazy. But he took their advice and followed his dream first to Topeka, Kansas, of all places, in a weathercaster job that lasted all of three months. And I'm like, what, what am I doing west of Kansas City? He thought his dream was over until a friend told him about a job at Cable Channel 12 in New York. He worked part-time there and something crazy happened. They liked him. They said, what do you know about the weather? I said, oh, I don't know too much about the weather. And they said, you gotta go back to school. He studied meteorology part-time and was just about done with his courses when his agent called about a job opening up north. So I get in the car, I'm so nervous. I'm, so, I'm driving and I'm nervous and I'm driving and I'm nervous and I'm like, I'm not going to get this job. I'm not going to get this job. I'm not going to get the job. I'm not going to get the job. I'm not going to get it. It was a big deal. It was like the biggest job ever. Like, you know, we're going for a major job here. And I was just totally, totally wigged out. His first impressions of Broadcast House weren't perfect. They forgot him in the lobby for an hour. And when he finally got his interview, things didn't go much better. He said he didn't want to hire me. I said, why not? He goes, because you're funny. He's like, no one in Connecticut is, likes humor. He goes, these people don't have a sense of humor. And I'm like... No one in Connecticut laughs. So he goes, you're, you're right. Little did they know. I, I'm just hoping that this, that this woodchuck, this beaver, this groundhog just doesn't go, hey, hey, hey. The boss relented and gave him a one-year deal oh working goodness, weekend mornings. And right away, the Scott we've grown to know and love was on full display. It was great for ratings. He's also eating my shoe. So um, I'm, I'm keeping a very close eye on him. But boy, it had his new bosses more than a little nervous. Okay. I pick up the phone and he'd go, <laughs> click, and then I'd, then I'd have to go back on the air. And I'd be like, okay, another vote of confidence. But he persevered and people responded. The ratings kept growing and he just kept doing what only he can do. 
He says he knew he'd made it when they told him his hours were changing. No more weekends. You'll do the weather Monday through Friday, and we're going to give you a raise. And I was like, this is working. That was 2003, and Scott's never looked back. We continue to cover winter storm Claire as it moves through the state. Today, he's as much a part of Connecticut mornings as sunrise over the Connecticut River. Have you thought about why it works? Why does it work? I think the majority of people wake up in the morning and go, mm. if they tune into Channel 3, they're going to get a, they're going to get a chuckle and they're going to get a smile. And I think they're going to get, people get put into a good mood. And that's not just me, it's the team that I work with. You can only play tennis if the partner is hitting the ball back to you. But it wasn't all easy volleys. There's been tough times too. Scott was in New York on 9-11 and rollerbladed downtown to cover the tragedy. A jet went flying into the other tower and I said, this is no accident. This is clearly an act of terrorism. He also opened his personal life up over the years. When the Hartford Current wanted to do a story on his house, he realized it was time to stop dancing around the subject and just say it. He's gay. I remember going and saying to, to, to the bosses, I said, they're going to come do an article on my house. And they're like, OK, that's fine. I'm like, and Paul lives there with me. And they're like, that's fine. And they went ahead and did the article. And that was the first time that it was public knowledge that I was with a male partner. But the article was printed and nothing changed. Same old Scott. But that same topic led to another tough time for Scott when he and his partner of 19 years, Paul Marty, split up. You have a regret in 20 years? Yeah. Uh, Paul, he, he's, that's probably the biggest regret, is that I did not spend enough time on my relationship as I did. I spent more time on work than I did on my relationship. Today, Scott is single. He says the breakup took a big toll emotionally, but despite the tough times, he wouldn't change a thing. If I weren't in television, would Paul and I still be together? Probably. But I, I, I wouldn't change it, though. I wouldn't change it, because I'm pretty happy. Paul is not the only breakup you've had. You've gone through a lot of traffic reporters. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do to them, and why haven't you done it to Nicole yet? Um, I don't know why Nicole stays. Nicole is been the been exception. Work, work, work. Before her, there was Rachel <laughs> and Teresa oh, gosh. and Alessa, and Scott hears it all the time. Why did you drive another one away? They all got offered amazing opportunities to go elsewhere. So how could they say no? So everybody thinks I did something to them. I'm like, no, I helped them. And as co-workers came and went, the job evolved too, in part because of the increasing importance of the early warning forecast. When there's weather, oh God, you're deadly serious. You yell at me more often to stop screwing around. When it's serious weather days, you just do serious weather days and there's no laughs. And people write in and go, are you upset today? And I'm like, no, like even people in the newsroom, the other day I was walking by and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, we had tornadoes today. Then in 2007, Scott's day got a lot busier with the launch of Better Connecticut. An hour show every day for 12 years. And we're up against Dr. Phil, we're up against uh, Ellen, and we beat them on a consistent basis. But the tough times and hard work have been far outnumbered by the laughs. Perhaps nothing got more laughs than the day he tried to shock us by eating what he thought was food off the floor. I made it to England, I made it to Australia, I made it to Hong Kong. We made it everywhere from eating cat puke on the air. And people think, oh, that was a stunt. That was a rating stunt. You have to absolutely 100% believe me say when I did not know that I was eating cat puke, it was cat puke. It, it was disgusting and I thought it was grape nut cereal and it wasn't, and it was warm and it was rubbery and it was soft and moist and I chewed it and I swallowed it like and then I realized my head cat had up. thrown up. I no, stepped no, no, in it and it fell it. off my shoe and I thought and it was grape nuts ate. on the ground Justin. and I, I just picked it up to eat it for shock value. And if you can't tell the Scott Haney story you without talking cat puke, you certainly can't tell it without talking about charity work. Five years ago, Scott was honored by a group of nonprofits for raising a combined million dollars at events like this. And that number just keeps on growing. I love to give back and I love to show up at these events. And apparently my name brings in some money, so I'm more than happy to continue to raise money for so many great charities. But in the end, on TV or off, Scott Haney has become a part of what makes Connecticut great. 
the lovable, sometimes crazy guy who has the forecast, but also helps us all to start our days with a smile. He was in the same job in television for 20 years. Time to change. And it's remarkable because I thought I was going to get fired in year one. If it weren't for the viewers, I would be nowhere. And I would just like to say thank you to the viewers. It's because, it's because they made my career. That, well, thank you. That is that, what I, a remarkable job. I, I don't know that I have ever laughed so much in an edit bay because we showed the clips, but it was we saw the whole pieces and we watched from the early days to the present I can't and believe we just laughed all that and stuff. laughed and laughed <laughs> so bravo is, thank you that is a remarkable job well, you did a great job congratulations to you it's thank an incredible you, accomplishment you. and you know we talked the, about we it wanna, with we, the interview the, it, it, there's nobody in Connecticut better known than you well so. thank you I appreciate that so much uh, and you guys you know we, we know that you have a wonderful friendship and we've got some wonderful pictures from uh, everybody on the morning team. <laughs> look at Irene. Look at, <laughs> look at Irene. That's a great picture. <laughs> well, great. it is, and it's you know, it, like you said, it's the team, and, and you've helped make us, and we've helped bring this uh, to oh 20 my years. God. So, uh, it's, so it's been funny. Uh, it's been an absolute blast and a pleasure to work with you. And uh, it, just, it was so fun to just yeah, look back I, at all I, those I, memories. I, my feelings are exactly the same. I love the team that I work with. That I, I wouldn't change anything, and I hope it stays like this forever. So I'm, it is I'm a blessed. very funny experience to do a 45-minute interview with your good friend, though. <laughs> it really is, right? right.